Remembering Alia. Today marks 21 years since the passing of Alia. However, she will never be forgotten. She was only 22 years old at the time of her death on August 25th, 2001. Aaliyah Dana Halton was more than a singer. She was an actress and she was a businesswoman. She accomplished so much in her short time of living. In 1979, Aaliyah was born on January the 16th in Brooklyn, New York. However, her parents moved to Detroit when Aaliyah was only five years old. Aaliyah started taking voice lessons early in life. When she attended elementary school, she was cast in the play called Annie. In Detroit, she attended the Detroit Performing Arts School. At the age of 10, she was seen on the TV show called Star Search. When she turned 12, she was signed by her uncle. At the 14 years of life, Aaliyah released her very first album called Age Ain't Nothing But a Number. The album consisted of Back and Forth. So get up and let this fucking mellow get At Your Best. You are love. When you feel what you feel. And age ain't nothing but a number. Back and forth became the number one song. At your best, You Are Love became number two. R. Kelly was the mentor, lead songwriter, and producer of the can see that. I grew up in the hood, and there was a lot of things, a lot of routes I could have went. With all the success, there is always drama somewhere in the making. Everybody started wondering about their relationship. Some even thought Aaliyah and R. Kelly were secretly married. During this time, she was only 15 years old, but no one really knew her age. For the record, you are how old? That's a secret. Uh -oh. However, they both denied the allegations. In 1995, Vi magazine published a copy of their marriage certificate. Was it real or was it fake? I guess the world may never know. In 1996, Aaliyah signed with Atlantic Records. She dropped her second album called One in a Million. Some of my favorite songs were If Your Girl Only Knew. If The one I gave my heart to. If you love me, how could you hurt me? One in a million. Baby, you don't know what you do to me between me and you. Four page letter. Daddy always told me make sure he's right. And choosy lover. This is when she started working with Missy Elliott and Timbaland. With this album, she sold over 3 million copies in the United States and 8 million worldwide. Around this time, she was falsely accused of having a glass eye. Aaliyah had stopped wearing the sunglasses and wore a patch over her left eye. Her hair was swooped over her left eye as well. She inspired a lot of women to start covering their left eye with their hair. So let's just say she started a trend. In 1998, Aaliyah's song, Are You That Somebody from the Dr. Doolittle movie became a hit. Aaliyah starred in Romeo Must Die in the year of 2000. In Romeo Must Die, she worked with Jet Li, DMX, Anthony Anderson, and Delroy Lindo. During the first weekend, the movie grossed $18.6 million. Aaliyah also produced the soundtrack. Four of her songs were included on the album. They were called, I Don't Wanna, Are You Feeling Me, Come Back In One Piece, And Try Again. Try Again was a number one hit. My song, when my songs can inspire somebody like that, that just makes it all worthwhile. She was nominated for a Grammy Award. Everybody was impressed with her talent. All right, Thank all right. You. Now you've been working it with these movies. Uh, Were you nervous? Very nervous. She soon landed a role in Queen of the Damned in 2001. 
In the film, Akasha was her name. The horror movie raked in $45 million at the box office. Aaliyah released her third album on July the 7th, 2001. It was called Aaliyah. It reached the number two spot on Billboard 200. On August 21st, 2001, Aaliyah appeared on 106 in Park with AJ and Free. She was giving away a Cadillac Escalade and $20,000. She announced the music videos that she was working on as well. So, <clears throat> being with somebody you love and how it just takes you to another place and like a natural high. In August of 2001, Aaliyah went to the Bahamas to shoot the video called Rock the Boat. Because they finished filming the video early, they decided to board the plane a day earlier. So they packed all of their equipment and boarded a small plane at Marsh Harbor Airport and began traveling to Florida. Sadly, they didn't make it far. The plane crashed right after takeoff and caught on fire. Unfortunately, two were in the hospital and the rest of them died instantly. The plane had exceeded its maximum weight. The people that were on the plane included the following. Anthony Dudd, Keith Wallace, Douglas Kratz, Gina Smith, Eric Foreman, the hairstylist, Christopher Madonado, the makeup artist, Scott Gallen, the security guard, and Louis Morales III. He was the pilot, so rest in peace to all of them as well. After investigation, they found that Louis Morales was not licensed to drive, and they found alcohol and traces of other drugs in his system. On August 31st, 2001, a private funeral was held for the beautiful Aaliyah in Manhattan. At the time of her death, she was dating Damon Dash. Although she never admitted it, Damon said he had planned to marry her. At the time of her death, she was in the midst of filming Z in the Matrix Reloaded. Aaliyah was supposed to be in the movie Honey as well. However, Jessica Alba ended up starring in the movie after Aaliyah's death. Some people say she was going to be in the movie Sparkle as well. Aaliyah had a beautiful soul and she shined like a star. She helped to shape the future of R&B. Miss Halton was confident in her body. Aaliyah was mature, unique, and a trendsetter. Her music was and still is powerful. It touched many people around the world. Although my words don't give any justice for her legacy, her legacy will live on. Baby girl was truly one in a million. Rest in peace, Aaliyah. Aaliyah is our guest. Am I saying your name right? I yes, am, right? Aaliyah. Aaliyah. Yes. I say Aaliyah. Aaliyah. It's Aaliyah. Aaliyah. Like Muhammad Ali. It's been too long and I'm lost without you. It's kinda hard when you're not around me. It's been too long and I like to look at myself as a trendsetter, as an artist that's cutting edge, and just an all-around great performer.